Well, hello everybody in the land of Facebook. <sighs> Coming at you again this lovely Wednesday afternoon. Um, I um, am here to do my second installment of my show on Roku um, called Millennial Mop, where I talk about different perspectives that I have of life from a millennial's perspective, and also um, maybe cleaning up some of the ideas that are in millennial culture currently. So I wanted to talk today about um, just the identity crisis in our country, in our nation. Um, as a millennial, I um, have seen and heard what I feel like is the greatest crisis in our country, and that is that of an identity. Identity has become very much so an, an exasperated idea, and it's also become a very, um, how can I say, kind of meaningless idea, right? A lot of people are pushing for certain identities, but at the same time, um, making identity very meaningless. So I just noticed from my perspective, I have seen a lot of things, um, or this way, this, this way of thinking kind of affects my generation where from the, what are you puppies doing? Sorry, I'm having my, um, the dogs are looking at things and seeing things from outside. Actually, I would have done this from a different place. This is the, where I can get the best light. And it's okay, guys. I'm doing something. It's all right. <laughs> and people, when they walk by, unfortunately, when people walk by, they um, bark at them. But <laughs> anywho, um, back onto the topic. I feel like from our generation, there's a lot of um, just uh, people pushing for an identity that's not their own. They are... Um, dissatisfied with what they see and what they have and so they're pushing for another identity you know what's interesting um and then i'm this shouldn't be a controversial topic to talk about because I, I really do want to talk about it um the gender identity crisis in our in our in our nation where we where a lot of people you know millennials and and under are feeling like they are a multitude of different gender identities um, or none at all, and they're pushing for the idea, or they're pushing for legislation to um, implement in the workplace or in schools where um, people have to, if you, whatever you identify that day, people, whether it be the administration of a school or your teacher or maybe your boss, has to abide by what you say that they are. And um, that's the thing about our culture right now. Is that dog behind? Yes, he is. So, um, I thought about it. So I was just listening to a podcast earlier today. Um, Dennis Prager, who is a um, political commentator as well as a lecturer. And um, he has a radio show. But his radio show is also on, you can find it on YouTube. Different people randomly put videos of, of his radio show on YouTube on their channels. I'm not sure if they're giving him credit. But um, he, um, that's beside the point. I um, found um, a video um, of his. It was, you know, I think it was maybe a 30 minute long podcast. And um, it was talking about Massachusetts schools. Now, I currently live in Massachusetts. And he was talking about how Massachusetts schools have now implemented a statewide law that implements school teachers to be forced to call students by their. Um, whatever their identity is that particular day, whether it's a boy or a girl, a teacher is forced to um, abide by that, um, by that, whatever that kid wishes to be called that day, whichever pronouns that kid wishes to be called, your teacher has to abide by it, no questions asked, and has to accept it on face value. Now, um, here's the thing. Um, <sighs> Now, I'm, those of you who have been following me on Facebook for a long time know that I used to be a, a huge advocate of LGBT, LGBT this and LGBT that um, because I felt for a long time, I'm not sure if the lighting is good, this is the only place I can get good lighting, sorry about that guys, 
maybe hold it to my face, but I used to be a huge advocate of those particular causes because I felt on the inside that there was, um, I mean, I was having an identity crisis on the inside myself. And um, so I felt like I should um, advocate uh, for these people because um, that's what I was feeling on the inside. But I realized that the more and more, which leads into my point, that I had uh, issues with identity, the more and more depressed I got, the more and more self-loathing I got. And I started hating being in my own skin. I started hating myself and started hating more and more my own existence. And I realized that the more and more I tried to um, shy away from my God-given identity, the, the who, I, who I was on the inside, not only my identity in Christ, but also my natural identity as a man, the more depressed I got. And I'm noticing about my generation, whereas depression has become um, something at the forefront. It's like a lot of people are talking about depression. A lot of millennials and a lot of teenage uh, teenagers from um, like high school age kids are talking about depression. And um, as a person who kind of immaturely and uh, independently studies psychology, I realize that, um, well, I just noticed a pattern that the more and more um, we shy away from our own particular identities, the more and more depressed we get. It's almost like there is a pattern. Now, a lot of people say that depression has always been a thing, but this is just the generation where people are just talking about it more. And uh, where I would disagree and agree with that is I, where I would agree with it. Um, is that yes, this is a generation where depression seems to be talked about more and mental illness and just different things going on with the mind where there was a stigma against it in the past. But where I would disagree with it is the reason why my generation is it's, it's feeling more and more depressed. And this is just a theory is because they are um, being taught by their left wing schools and their left wing TV programs and their left wing everything to be that everything is subjective, that there's no distinctions between right and wrong. There's no distinctions between man and woman anymore. There's no distinctions between good and evil. There's no distinctions between right and wrong. Everything is subjective. Everything is relative. Everything is based on your own personal feelings and your own um, perspective on things, that there's no absolutes. And um, for me personally, when I began to realize that um, this everything is relative, sort of mindset. Oh, hi, Cinco. How are you today? Everything sort of mindset, everything is relative mindset, not only ties into Marxism, but it also ties into depression. When you try to escape your God-given identity and your God-given, um, how can I say, your God-given identity as not only your identity in Christ, but your identity as a man or a woman, when you try to escape it, I feel like all of those things are attached to it. There is a um, this this uh, feeling of um, well, I'm not. I don't like the, the self hatred on the inside where you just loathe. Um, I'm trying to find a proper lighting here. <laughs> where you just loathe who you are on the inside. My dogs are going crazy because since it's a nice day outside, everybody is going for walks and. Um, every time someone is outside, the dogs, dogs get excited, but the more and more you try to escape, I'll just talk louder. The more and more you try to escape your God given destiny and just to who you are on the inside, your God given identity, I believe that ties into depression because you don't like your current existence. You don't like who you are. You don't like what you have on the inside of you. Um, and so you're trying to escape it because you're listening to all of these, uh, all of these different forces out there telling you these different things. Now, I know that this can be considered a, um, a controversial topic, but I don't believe in controversial topics. I feel like since we live in a country that um, advocates for free speech, I feel like this is something that needs to be talked about. I'm going to talk about it. I feel like um, from a Christian perspective, as well as from just a logical perspective, which I do believe they, those are synonymous, so they could be synonymous. I feel like um, in our generation, this whole, there is an agenda. Now, 
years ago, I didn't need to believe that there was an agenda out there from the left. There was like a left wing agenda. I didn't really believe that there was one before, but um, the more and more I see the crisis in our country, especially among my generation who were raised, like the millennial generation as well as the Y generation who are raised by the baby boomer generation, and what we were being passed down from, this everything is relative mindset is what's causing the depression and the unawareness in my generation. The depression and the um, the suicidal, the suicidality and the um, just the people feeling beside themselves and not liking being in their own skin, not liking who they are, has something to do with what's going on in our schools. I mean, I know people who go to certain schools who um, are being taught that uh, uh, everything is relative mindset. Hey, buddy. This everything is relative mindset. Not, not, there's no distinction. <laughs> And one of the things I'm happy to say that I was raised on was the idea that there are distinctions between right and wrong. Being raised with a, a godly worldview helped me understand that there are definitely distinctions between right and wrong. That, uh, that, that it's not just anything that I'm thinking about at the moment. That there are definitely distinctions between right and wrong, good and bad, man and woman. And without those distinctions, I believe the whole foundation falls apart. Now, with my generation, I feel like we are the most susceptible to it. In fact, I've heard some people say that the millennial generation, those who are within my age range, like 25 and um, maybe 25 to 30, are the lost generation. They actually have more hope for the generation Y, which is our people who are born after 2000. The people who are born after 2000 are those who have, we have more hope for those people, apparently. I've heard some people say that because my generation has fallen into so much leftist ideology that um, we have fallen so deep that we haven't been able to sink ourselves back up from it yet. And that's the thing. I feel like that is what is going on with our generation. I feel like what God is doing is he's raising up voices. He's raising up people like Ben Shapiro, like De Dennis Prager, like um, even Milo Yiannopoulos. A lot, a lot of these, I, didn't, I did not pronounce his name correctly just now. But a lot of these people who are, who have a voice to our generation. I mean, did you realize that a lot of young people actually are listening to more conservative thinkers? Now, I'm not saying it's right or wrong to be conservative or liberal. I believe everybody is on a particular spectrum as far as what they believe politically. But I do believe that um, the reason why I was, I was red-pilled, so to speak, I was red-pilled into thinking this way because I feel like um, not only is my identity as a man is at stake, but my identity as a black man I feel like that the Democratic left have not been on my side my entire life, and uh, just as a black man, I feel like all of these particular things where everything is considered relative. Now, this affects us as a generation, these, 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 this idea that everything is subjective, that there are no particular um, distinctions between good and evil. Um, one of the things I knew is that, uh, like growing up, coming from a godly worldview, a Christian worldview, was that God was good, and that um, there def there's definitely evil in the world, and that evil is going to try to destroy you if you don't know your identity in Christ. Knowing your identity is very important. My godmom is on a trip to um, Florida currently, and she... Uh, she Facebook lived her message where she talked about your identity. Now, a lot of times, um, we as, uh, you know, whichever sect of Christianity you're a part of, whichever sect of believer, whatever denomination you're a part of, a lot of times identity isn't really talked about that much. I mean, we've heard it before as Christians, the, um, the phrase identity in Christ, but it's not exacerbated upon um, that often. And um, I noticed that this is the time where we need to talk more and more about our identity than ever before. This is the time where we need to understand our identity more and more like, than we've ever before, because this generation is experiencing a crisis especially us millennials, where you have people who believe that they are several gender genders or none at all, and um, they don't identify with who they are. 
And um, that's just one example. The gender identity crisis is just one example of how I believe that is a sign of how we have fallen by the wayside as far as identity is concerned. We need to understand identity crisis. We need to go into the scriptures and understand our identity in Christ a lot more than we have before. This is the time. This is definitely the time. And... Um, this is what I believe um, is needed. Sorry, the dogs are barking in the background because someone's outside. But anyway, this is the time where we understood our identity in Christ. Um, greater than any other time in history, I believe. And I feel like one of my personal callings is to um, tell my generation about their calling, about their giftings, about who they are. In Christ, tell my, I mean, to, 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 um, to emphasize values again, to emphasize, um, just, uh, having good values, like understanding relationships. See, one of the things that I fear for my generation, since sexuality has become such, uh, a, a, just a, a relative thing that no one really thinks about anymore and they just said okay well if I want to have casual sex I'm gonna have casual sex um, I remember um, I was talking to a co-worker at work um, at work um, it was right before I went to lunch and one of the things he said was that he wanted to download one of those um, dating apps and this guy is a little bit younger than me he wanted to download one of those dating apps, I think like Tinder, because he wanted to just hook up with people because he didn't necessarily want to commit to a relationship at this point. He just wanted to have casual sex. And um, so I proceeded to tell him, well, you can do that, but um, there there might be some consequences to that. I'm not going to tell you what to do because you're a grown person, but I'm going to let you know that there are consequences to your actions. And what's, that's one of the issues that I feel like in my generation is that... Um, they uh it's like sex is looked at as such a it's, that's another identity crisis i believe as you can see i haven't really gone down points i, I haven't created any bully po bullet points for my shows these are basically just me winging points but i'm trying to make them as organized as possible um well anyway one of the identity crises sees i believe that my generation is facing is that of relative sexuality where people are so into the idea of casual sex and that they may not be into it, but they think it's, it's perfectly fine to do that. Even the people who didn't necessarily, like back in the past, believe in God didn't necessarily have this casual idea of sex, even the men. And so when I heard this uh, gentleman say that, that I work with, I was like, wow, this, that's, that's really interesting. So you just kind of want to, you don't want to commit to a relationship. And I feel like people within our generation deal with this idea of like of just just this casual sex, this free love sort of mentality. And now we have a lot of apps, dating apps, like not even dating apps, but they're they're basically called hookup apps. Well, they're not called hookup apps. They basically are hookup apps. But I believe this feeds into our culture. This feeds into the idea that everything is relative and that there nothing really matters as long as you personally feel that it does. And um, which also the opposite is true to some of these people that it shouldn't exist if you feel like it shouldn't. So if you, it's all about your feelings. It's all about uh, what you feel on the inside. And, and we all know, that, and most of us know that the Bible says that don't follow the heart. But, and because um, the heart is deceitful, deceitfully, there we go, that's the word I'm looking for, wicked in all its ways, deceitfully wicked. So one of the things I noticed that I needed to do was follow God, because my own heart is deceitfully wicked in all its ways. So that's why I follow God. So that's one of the things that um, I really feel like is going on in our generation. I just want, I didn't want to take up too much time. I guess it's almost been 20 minutes, but um, that I just felt that that was what was on my mind this time. I know, I know, Coco. That was one of the things I feel like was on my mind. And um, as the dog barks right next to me. <laughs> and um, this is my second installment of Millennial Mop. Now, basically, um, this show of mine is going to be recorded here on Facebook Live. 
and then my mom mm -hmm. will uh, convert this video and put it on Roku, which is her new network. Mm -hmm. It's called the Prophets and Apostles, uh, the mm -hmm. Apostles and Prophets Network on Roku, um, which I didn't even know was a service. You can actually um, create your own network on um, Roku now. didn't realize you can do that. But anyway, this show will be on it. Um, I'll have my uh, mother, uh, Celestine Tina Odoms, send the link if you want to watch me there as well or watch whatever is, else is on there. You can. This show will basically be, as I mentioned before, me talking about different subjects that relates to my generation, the millennial generation. Ah, see, um, <laughs> mom joins as I, uh, my god mom joins as, as I, uh, I'm um, getting ready to sign off, but um, good to see you. Pray for her because she's been experiencing some, um, so lots, lots of pain in her body. Um, but yes, um, God bless you guys. Oh, thank you for the hearts. That's awesome. Well, anyway, uh, well, since mom just joined, I'll stay on a little bit longer. Um, basically, what I was talking about, mom, was our identity, um, just the identity crisis, I believe. That's it, in our. Um, in our, in, our, in our generation. Oh, I know, Coco. I know. <laughs> I know, no, Coco, get out of there, okay? I'm back. <laughs> anyway, um, I was talking about the identity crisis, and um, I was talking about it, how it related to our generation, my generation as a millennial. And this is actually going to be a show that's going to be weekly. I believe I'm going to record, um, I try to record every Wednesday. Um, it won't be this late. It would act, because this is just... Um, it's just late this time because my Wednesday is a little bit different, but, uh, typically Wednesdays I'll be out of the house, like, by the afternoon anyway, but, um, uh, it'll probably be recorded, like, a lot earlier, probably in the morning, but, um, but yes, yes, I, yes, I was actually, um, um, I'm actually, well, those of you who are watching on Roku, um, this is recorded on Facebook Live, so that's why I'm able to talk to people directly, just to let you guys know. But yes, I just read um, my godmom's post. We're in the car heading to Fort Mill to hear John Scotland, and she taught throughout identity throughout the story. And yes, I actually mentioned you. And I was, I, if you um, go back into the earlier, um, just like go, go after I end the um, broadcast, if you go back earlier into the um, into the broadcast, you'll see that I actually mentioned your um your message the other day um on identity and how that's been your um the pinpoint uh, topic and uh, i feel like it's a very important topic i feel like it's very seldom talked about in our generation um and we need it we need to know our identities in christ we need because i do believe that there is an identity crisis in our nation and we need to um oh thank you uh sitco it's nice to see from you uh hear from you again bless you too um so i just believe that this is something that we're talking about and this is something that we need to, that needs to be talked about because very seldom is is it talked about and um yeah, this is uh, that's good. But anyway, yes, I will uh, see you guys next week. Be, this will be recorded a lot earlier. This will be a show um, every week. The um, this is basically all I do on Facebook anymore. Is this I don't um, spend that much time anymore on Facebook because I felt like a lot of it was a waste of time. And social media, and I've been getting away from it. The only social media that I have currently is my Instagram, and if you want to follow me there, it's going to be Jermus, J-E-R-M-U-S underscore, um, if you want to follow me on Instagram, if you have one, but um, God bless you guys, much love to you all, thank you guys uh, for coming on, thanks to um, Mama Wack and Sitko, and I think a few other people joined. But um, many blessings to you guys. I love you all. And um, I will see you guys next week. As I said, if you are interested in looking um, up this show on Roku, be sure to um, uh, follow. I'll actually, I'll have my mom put the link in the description as soon as uh, she sees this broadcast. So many blessings to you guys. And I will see you guys next week. Much love. Bye-bye.